Hey, I'm Caleb from Caleb's Aviation. Welcome back to another episode of Aviation News. Today's episode will discuss JetBlue Airways and Spirit Airlines merger, and why it was recently denied. There are several reasons the merger was likely denied by the U.S. government, and we'll discuss those reasons now. The first item of discussion and reason the merger was likely denied has to do with more industry consolidation. In recent years, there has been a noticeable increase in airline consolidation and mergers. You have Northwest and Delta, TWA and American, US Air and American, Southwest and Airtran, and the list goes on. While this may seem like a good thing at first glance, it often leads to problems. More mergers mean less competitors, and airlines can charge higher prices because they control more of the industry. For example, JetBlue and Spirit are two of the largest low-cost carriers here in the United States. If JetBlue and Spirit suddenly merged into one airline, you'd mainly only have Frontier Airlines as the main competitor. If the scenario were to play out in this way, this would mean there'd be much less competition for Frontier, and Frontier could set much higher fares. This, however, is just a hypothetical scenario, but we've seen this sort of trend happen in the past, and likely it would happen again. The second reason regulators may be wary of a merger is a poor fleet fit and culture clashes may take place. Even though Spirit and JetBlue have some similarities in fleet, like flying Airbus A320s, Spirit and Frontier actually have more in common. In fact, Frontier originally bid to merge with Spirit, but that was of course denied. JetBlue currently flies the Embraer E190, which Spirit has no experience operating, and the Airbus A220, which has recently joined the JetBlue fleet, which Spirit also does not fly. Additionally, Spirit flies the Airbus A320neo, just like Frontier, which JetBlue does not operate. Also, talking about cultural clashes, that could also take effect. We saw this with the United Continental merger. Following the United Continental merger, There were all sorts of cultural issues, how things were managed, how fleets were operated, how staff were trained, and more. A JetBlue and Spirit merger would likely run into a lot, if not all, of the same problems due to major changes in operation. Also, in recent months and years, JetBlue has really started to transition its focus to more catering to the business class passengers. They've introduced Mint Business Class on certain Airbus A321s across the country, and the JetBlue Mint Studio, now flying transatlantic routes. Compare this to Spirit or Frontier, who fly densely packed airplanes with an all-economy layout, a very tight airplane, and much different from JetBlue. By the way, if you haven't seen it yet, make sure to check out my video flying on the Frontier A320neo in those economy seats. I'll leave a link in the upper right. It's definitely worth checking out. Additionally, now that the JetBlue and Spirit merger has been officially shut down, it may give the Hawaiian and Alaska Airlines merger some trouble. For those of you who didn't know, Alaska Airlines and Hawaiian Airlines are intending to merge, but just like the JetBlue and Spirit merger, this will seek government approval and regulation. For more details about the Alaska-Hawaiian merger, check out my video linked in the upper right, where I discussed it in much more detail. However, it is worth keeping in mind, Alaska Airlines and Hawaiian Airlines currently have very little overlap on their routes, versus Spirit and JetBlue, who have a lot of overlap, so regulators may be more kind to a Hawaiian and Alaska merger than they'd otherwise be if they were both based in the continental U.S. Executives at both Hawaiian and Alaska have expressed concern over the regulators agreeing on this merger, and it is also very likely the regulators may just flat out refuse the Alaska-Hawaiian merger, as they've done with the JetBlue Spirit merger for similar reasons. Additionally, the main focus of JetBlue and Spirit's merger is to expand their domestic reach. With the JetBlue taking delivery in recent months of certain A321neos, with fully flat equipped Mint Studio suites flying routes across the country like Boston to San Francisco. JetBlue's primary focus in acquiring Spirit would be to help acquire a lot of slots on the West Coast where JetBlue currently would like to expand their service. 
Additionally, Spirit has recently taken on Airbus A321neos, which they use on their transcontinental routes nowadays, which JetBlue also flies. In the end, the verdict on the Spirit JetBlue merger remains to be seen, and we'll see what happens as regulation continues. Anyways, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. I'd appreciate it. I also hope you are enjoying these aviation news videos, as I've really enjoyed making them. Finally, go check out the Portland Aviation YouTube channel where this footage is from of the JetBlue A321neo. It's great. But until next time, wishing you blue skies and tailwinds.